Well, Holland's Vineyard was founded in 2004, in the fall of 2004. Uh, the building here has uh, housed wine shops actually for the past 30 years. And uh, uh, so Helms is actually the third wine shop to be uh, in this building. Uh, we focus on Northwest wines, although we carry wines from all over the world. Uh, but again, with a focus on small batch boutique wineries from uh, around Washington State and, and Oregon and a little bit of Idaho as well. Okay, so I was asked to uh, pick out some wines that I had, I thought had particular outstanding qualities. Uh, it was very difficult because these are all my little babies in here. So uh, going around and picking out the favorites is like picking out your favorite child. It's <laughs> not something that, that I typically would do. But um, uh, on that note, there are some ones that I think have uh, are very well made that have uh, that just sort of stand out uh, for different reasons. The first one here is uh, Forgeron's Chardonnay. Uh, Forgeron is a, a actually French for blacksmith, and the winery is located in Walla Walla. Uh, and the, uh, the gal, uh, who's the winemaker actually, is from France herself. To me, the wine is the closest, one of the closest things I've ever had to a uh, French style or a Montrachet uh, style Washington Chardonnay. It's balanced, it's got a backbone of good minerality, uh, it's got a tremendous finish, and it actually has a little greenish gold sparkle on it. And I was actually at, at the winery one time and I asked her about that. And she said that she had been trying to capture that particular quality uh, in her Chardonnay for five years, and she was able to do it with this vintage. So apparently, um, uh, to the French, that little glimmer of green gold uh, on the rim of the wine means something extra special. Um, and in the glass, it's not only gorgeous, but on the palate, it just has that length. Uh, it's very balanced, and, 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 and you can taste where the wine came from. It's very, very well made. The second white I selected was uh, Doug McCray's Viognier. Uh, this is off the Ciel de Cheval vineyard, which is on Red Mountain. Definitely one of the top vineyards in the state. Uh, I think it's getting to the point where Washington wines are going to be recognized by the vineyard that they came from, much in the pattern of the European system, uh, where we have, uh, uh, again, the French, there's no really real a word in, in French for winemaker. Uh, it's wine grower, uh, essentially. So. Uh, to me, I, I kind of believe in the same philosophy, the wine is made in the vineyard. And the Ciel de Cheval uh, vineyard up in Red Mountain, although this is a very hot growing region, Viognier ripens properly, it's a thicker skin white grape that needs more heat units. Uh, and Doug uh, Lecrae is a pioneer for Rome grapes in the state of Washington. He was one of the original Rome Rangers, he's introduced Veds and so and some of the other uh, Grenache Blanc and some of the other obscure Rome grapes. Uh, worked hand in hand with Dick Boucher, especially uh, in the Cross area, to um, grow some outstanding Syrah. Uh, this one is just very ripe. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, it is a stronger, stronger, uh, you know, it's 14 and percent, but it's not hot. It's just big and full-blown, massive tropical fruit. Uh, again, decent uh, backbone of minerality, courtesy of the, the Red Mountain uh, growing area. The next one, the first red here, is the Robert Carl Claret. Robert Carl, uh, first of all, Claret is, uh, of course, the British term for a Bordeaux blend. And Robert Carl Winery is uh, uh, one of those wineries that they don't, uh, they're out of Spokane, first of all, so they don't have grapes that grow uh, around their winery, but they do have uh, uh, some vineyard property that they've purchased. And um, Joseph Gunzelman, who the, who's the winemaker, is also uh, an, actually an anesthesiologist, uh, and he is very precise with his uh, winemaking. You can tell that the fruit sourced um, from this particular wine comes from uh, the Finney Hill Vineyards, uh, the McKinley Springs area. It's a true Bordeaux blend in that it has all five, uh, or has five Bordeaux grapes uh, that are blended into it. It's one of those wines that's becoming sort of a cult classic, meaning when it's released, uh, it's nearly sold out within the first month or so. And uh, it's extremely balanced, very polished, something that's age-worthy maybe for six to eight years, but it's also designed for immediate consumption. Um, and similar to the Forger on Chardonnay, it has an incredible length of the finish, uh, and it's just very well made. The next one is uh, Mike Janik's Syrah. This is actually his Lewis Vineyard Syrah. Uh, 
I'm especially fond of this particular vineyard site. I had a chance to actually be in the viticulture class with uh, one of the Lewises uh, who was going through and getting his certificate. So the vineyard is just east of the Boucher Vineyard in the, in the Prosser area. It has incredible length in terms of growing season, uh, whereas a lot of the surrounding vineyards will uh, yet essentially have to harvest the fruit by the end of October. The Lewis Vineyard fruit allows for more hang time. It can get up to uh, a week to 10 days longer than a lot of the local vineyards, and then that allows the Syrah to really come into full physiological development. Uh, Dunham makes a, a Lewis Vineyard uh, designate as well as, as a couple other wineries. But I really like what, uh, what Mike Janik has done. Uh, first of all, the guy is uh, uh, one of the original winemakers in the state. was named Winemaker of the Year in 2007 by uh, Seattle Magazine. And uh, I really, really enjoy uh, what he's done with this bottle of wine. Uh, very satiny on the, on the, on the texture um, and very polished. The last one here is Stevenson's Cabernet Sauvignon. David Stevenson is, uh, I refer to him in, uh, as uh, uh, the all-around nice guy winemaker because he just is, he's Mr. Humble. He is, uh, he's just an all-around good guy. There's no, there's no uh, uh, attitude with him whatsoever. He's just who he is. And he makes really, real small batch wines out of his airport location in Walla Walla. This particular Cabernet, he made a whopping 180 cases of it. And he babies every barrel, of course. Um, his wines are, are uh, uh, made using not only Walla Walla grapes, but also a healthy dose of Yakima Valley uh, vineyards around the Tri-Cities area. So he's realizing he can get massive structure from a lot of the Yakima Valley fruit that has a, a good backbone, nice acidity, blended in with the, the plush, uh, deep, rich fruit uh, characteristics from some of the Walla Walla sites. Uh, his wines are, are very age-worthy. Uh, this particular Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, I believe, will age uh, up to 10 to 15 years mm. gracefully. Um, it's Right now, it's just an infant. We had a bottle open for three days uh, recently, and uh, uh, the tannins just started to come out really on the second day. So uh, very well made, and uh, you know, for around $30, $35, I think it's very fairly priced too.